Even though it's not typically thought of as a cybersecurity topic, understanding data backups is critical to cybersecurity. In cybersecurity, we often focus on preventing uh, attacks, but sometimes attacks still happen. And if something bad happens to our data, we want to be able to restore it. So in this video, we're going to talk about three types of backups. Hi, my name is Kevin Wallace, and this video is going to cover four main topics. Number one, we'll see why backups are necessary. Why do we care about backups? Then we'll take a look at the three to one backup rule. We'll see exactly what that means and how you can implement it. But the main focus of this video is we're going to compare three different types of backups. And those types are full, incremental, and differential. We'll see the pros and cons of each, and we'll discover that many organizations don't just use one versus another, they use a hybrid approach. And we'll take a look at several common backup approaches that are used in organizations of various sizes. And by the way, this video is a sampling from a new course that I'm currently developing. It's the CCST Cybersecurity course, and it's going to be available sometime in April of 2025. Now, it's not going to be on Udemy, so don't look for it there, but it is going to be available in my all access pass, which you can check out by going to kwtrain.com slash all hyphen access. The all access pass is a yearly subscription where you get access to over 30 on-demand courses covering a wide range of tracks, enterprise, cloud, collaboration, cybersecurity, and your IT career. Again, to check that out, go to kwtrain.com slash all hyphen access. And if you remember, sometime in April, this CCST cybersecurity course, it will magically appear in your library. Now let's get into our video where we will learn about three types of backups. In this video, let's discuss why backups of our data are essential, and it's really the primary method we're going to use to safeguard our organization's data. And in cybersecurity, we often focus on preventing cyber attacks, but the reality is that prevention might eventually fail. And if that happens, having a good backup strategy, that's going to be our last line of defense. Think about this. Data, it's our organization's most valuable asset. And if we don't have proper backups, then if there were a successful ransomware attack against us, or we had a hardware failure, or even human error, any of those things could cause massive damage to the organization. But the good news is, having an effective backup strategy in place, that's going to not only protect us from those types of threats, it's also going to help ensure compliance with regulatory requirements, and it's going to help us maintain business continuity. And before diving in to specific backup types, let's establish some fundamentals. The gold standard of the industry is the 3 to one backup rule. And the three in the 3 to one means that we should have three copies of our data. So if I have a file, for example, that I want to make sure is backed up, I'm going to have the original file that might be on my laptop's solid state drive. It might be on a file server. But in addition to that original file, I want to have two extra copies for a total of three copies. And the two in the 3 to one backup rule means that I should have copies of my data on two different types of media. One type of media might be that solid state drive inside of my laptop. That's where the original file might live. But in addition to that, let's have it somewhere else, like on a NAS, a network attached storage device on the network. That's an example of two different types of media. And there are other types as well. We might have tape drives that are backing up a large file server, for example. But we want to have copies on two different types of media. And the one in the 3 to one backup rule means that we should have one off-site copy. And this might be in the cloud. Maybe we store a copy on our Dropbox account. Maybe we use Google Drive or Amazon AWS. But we're going to have one copy not at our location. So if there were some disaster that happened at our location, there would still be a copy somewhere else. And there are two metrics that we need to keep in mind as we're designing our backup strategy. And the first of those two metrics is the RTO, the recovery time objective. If there is a disaster, what is an acceptable amount of time before we have access to our data again? And that's going to vary widely from one organization to the other. 
Maybe in some organizations, if we're down for five hours, that's not a big deal. In other organizations, we might lose millions of dollars if we're down for five hours. We want to be up and going again in less than 30 minutes or maybe less than five minutes. What is the business need for recovery? And that's going to help drive our budget towards our backup systems. The other metric is the RPO, the recovery point objective. If I'm doing regular backups and there is a disaster that occurs where I need to restore data from a backup, how recent does that last backup need to be? Does it need to be a week ago? Does it need to be a day ago? Does it need to be an hour ago? How recent of a backup do we need? And again, deciding your business needs for an RPO, that can help drive the budget for your backup systems. And please remember that an untested backup, that can give us a false sense of security. We need to regularly test and verify that our backups really are backing up and we really can restore data from those backups. And in this video, we're going to consider three types of backups, full, incremental, and differential. Let's begin with the full backup. And this full backup is exactly what it sounds like. It is a complete copy of all of our data. And since we're copying everything, it's going to take longer to do that as compared to only backing up data that has changed since the last time, as an example. And if we're trying to maintain copies of what the data looked like yesterday and the day before and the day before, that's going to increase our storage requirements. However, the good news is a full backup is the simplest backup to restore from. You only need one backup file and you just restore it. And as a result, it's going to restore our data in the least amount of time compared to the other backup methods because we're only restoring a single file. And you can see on screen that I've listed a few other advantages and disadvantages of full backups. Next, let's consider incremental backups. What we can do is start off with a full backup and then an incremental backup that we might do the next day that is only going to back up data that has changed since the full backup. And then if I do another incremental backup the next day, it's only going to back up data that has changed since the previous backup. Whether that previous backup was an incremental backup or a differential backup or a full backup, and in the example on screen, incremental backup number two, it is only backing up what has changed since the previous day's incremental backup. And then incremental backup number three, it's only going to back up things that have changed since incremental backup number two. And because these incremental backups are going to be smaller than a full backup, the backup process is going to be quicker and it's going to require less storage because we're not backing up everything every time. Now, when it comes to restoring from a backup, if we're using incremental backups, we are going to require more time because we might be dealing with multiple files that we have to individually restore. Let's say that we do a full backup on Monday and then on Tuesday, we do incremental backup number one. On Wednesday, we do incremental backup number two. And on Thursday, we do incremental backup number three. And then sometime Thursday afternoon, maybe there is a disaster and I need to restore from backup. Well, to do that, I'm going to have to first restore my full backup. Then I'll have to restore Tuesday's incremental backup number one, Wednesday's incremental backup number two, and then finally Thursday's incremental backup number three. So the restoration process is going to take longer. So while we do have some advantages as far as quick backups and low storage requirements, if we have an RTO, a recovery time objective that is very tight in terms of time, then we might not want to rely on incremental backups because they are going to take longer. But there is sort of a middle ground between a full backup and an incremental backup, and that's called a differential backup. A differential backup, that's going to back up any change made since the last full backup, not the last incremental or not the last differential backup. We're always backing up what has changed since the last full backup. So in the example at the top of the screen, let's say that we did a full backup on Monday, and then on Tuesday we did differential backup number one. Well, that's going to back up what has changed since the previous day, since the last full backup. But then on Wednesday, we do differential backup number two. And regardless of what was backed up in differential backup number one, differential backup number two is going to back up everything that has changed since the last full backup. And the same thing goes for differential backup number three. So do you see that this is sort of a middle ground between full and incremental backups? We're requiring less storage than the full backup but we're requiring more than the incremental backup. 
because the longer we go making these differential backups day after day, the larger and larger those backups are going to become because they're backing up more and more data each day. But on a positive note, the restoration process is going to be quicker than with an incremental backup because we only have to restore two files. Number one, we restore the full backup and then we can restore whatever the latest differential backup is. And if it's differential backup number three, we don't have to do anything with differential backups number one and two. We just restore the full backup, we restore differential backup number three, and we're good to go. And for your study, this comparison chart is going to show us the three different backup types side by side, and that's going to help us better understand their trade-offs. This table reminds us that full backups give us the fastest restore time, but they're the slowest to create, and they use the most storage. Incremental backups, they are the fastest to create, and they use the least storage, but restoring the data is going to take longer, and it's going to be more complex because we're dealing with multiple files that need to be restored. And differential backups, we see that that strikes a nice balance between full and incremental backups. And this is why most organizations don't use just one backup strategy. They use a hybrid approach to backups. In fact, let's look at some common hybrid backup strategies used in real-world environments. Many organizations do a full backup weekly, and they either combine that with daily incremental backups or daily differential backups. And for environments that might have more complex needs, they might use a tiered approach like you see in the bottom left of the screen, where we do monthly full backups, then at the beginning of each week, we do a differential backup, and then on the other days, we do incremental backups. This approach balances the efficiency of our storage with recovery time. And another popular approach is called the grandfather-father-son rotation. This is going to use a hierarchy of backups that are retained for different time periods. That's going to give us both recent recovery points and long-time archival. For example, we could take a grandfather backup monthly and we keep it for a year. So after a year's time, I've got these monthly snapshots of what my data looked like last month and the month before and the month before and so on, all the way back to a year ago. We can take father backups weekly and we can keep them for one month and we can take son backups daily and we could retain those for one week. And that's a look at various ways that we can back up our data and then recover that data if we need to. 